Welcome to episode three of the Disney edition of the Castles, Capes, and Clones vlogcast. Today, we'll be talking about the closing of Blue Sky Studio. Um, Disney Plus making 95 million subscribers and more. We are Castles, Capes, and Clones, where we discuss everything in the Disney universe. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post, as it really does help us out. Hey everybody, I'm Lauren, and I'm here with my cousin and co-pilot, Rich. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Nothing, nothing really new to report. I'm just coming back from dialysis, so I'm a little bit sleepy, but we've got some exciting things to talk about today, so yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to talking about them. Let's jump in. All right. Well, let's start with the first story. Uh, I think one of the more shocking stories is that Disney is closing Blue Sky Studios, uh, which is the Fox studio that did Ice Age and Rio, Ferdinand, uh, the Peanuts movie. So it's sad. They're looking to reshuffle the 450 employees. But, you know, nonetheless, it's kind of like the history of Blue Sky. Um, you know, it's kind of sad that they're severing the doors. Yeah. Um... I'm not actually surprised because of the pandemic. Like it's, uh-huh. I mean, it's, it's affecting everything. And, you know, Disney yeah. is, you know, at a loss because, you know, they can't really do much. Um, and having, I don't know if you can hear that. There's like, something. yeah, I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I know. And, and it's not like a car alarm. It's at least someone, somebody uh, hitting the yeah. So, yay. Um, but I'm saying like it's 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 got to be difficult in a time where you can't do as many uh, productions and having four animation studios. Yeah. What's it? It's like Disney, Walt Disney Animation, Pixar, um, the, like the. So the um, straight to video version Toon. of that. Toon, yeah, the Toon that. Studios. Yeah. And I feel like they have another one in some other branch somewhere. But anyway. Uh-huh. Um, so it, it's to, it's not a surprise to me. It's just super unfortunate because uh, like their brand of movie is it's different than Disney. Right? Yeah. And I think, you know, the landscape of animated film needs needs that. So, I mean, I'm glad they're gonna try to find places for everyone, but um, you know, like I was I was definitely hoping for another Peanuts uh, movie. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of that one, um, and what they did with that was great. But I think I think why it would have been nice to have the studio is to do projects like the Peanuts, where it's kind of like you know, Pixar and, and uh, Disney would not do a project like Peanuts. Yeah. Um, you know, something like Blue Sky that would. Mm-hmm. And I think that that, you know, I totally understand the reasoning yeah. behind closing the, the studio, but it's sad nonetheless. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, here's some sad news. Christopher Plummer passed away at 91. Now, Christopher Plummer was best known as uh, Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music, but in terms of Disney, uh, he was in uh, Up, and oh my gosh, it's escaping me, the other thing that he was in. Um, Oh my gosh. Well, he was in another thing for Disney. And um, yeah, it's sad. 
now I'm like I'm looking at it up. Pretty sure he was in the good drag show. No, I don't know why that. I don't know why that's popping into my head. No, well, I, I, I I'm pretty sure he was in uh, National Treasure. That's it. It is. It's National Treasure. It's the. I'm like. Yeah, it's the grandfather, right? Yeah, I keep picturing. Yeah. I keep picturing. Uh, John Voight, but I'm like, no, not that character. The, uh, the, not the grand. Oh, was the grandfather? Yeah, the grandfather. Yeah, the grandfather. Yeah, that's yeah, that's it. it was, uh, and now that you say it, I totally remember that being the other thing. There you go. So yeah, sad news. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you know, he was he's been active for ever. Like, like even. Literally, like, like he was in Knives Out. And that yeah. was a big kind of to do. He had a storied career. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, our hearts go out to his family and friends. Yeah. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I got something in my throat. <clears> throat> Soul grosses nearly a hundred million uh, overseas, and that's great considering the fact that all this COVID and stuff is happening. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't follow overseas box office, so yeah. I, I don't know. In a normal sense, is that I mean, 100 million is 100 million, so that's good, but like, I don't know what the other movies did, right internationally yeah. in normal times yeah i'm not quite sure about that um, but i know that it's a good number yeah for overseas so but i i don't i couldn't give you any comparisons yeah i don't know but um you know uh i'd imagine that's pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i would imagine it's pretty good too and that's just overseas, so it's not even. Well, I guess. Yeah. Is that true? Like, true box office, like theater. Yeah. Or is that other stuff? Uh, no, it's the box office. I mean, this is gonna be way better than us then, because. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I think most of our our places are closed except for a few in right. some places so um anyway yeah very cool very cool pixar that you uh, your film is doing so well and i'm glad that it's doing well because you don't especially, especially <laughs> in this day and age yeah <laughs> yeah i don't like it so <laughs> dar you so no, I don't dislike it. I just didn't, I know. yeah, do as you know as much for me as it did for other people. And, like, uh, have they? I mean, I don't even know how movies now in this past year and moving forward until theaters open, how they measure success. Because what do yeah. you count as 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 profit when it's on a streaming service? Mm-hmm. Like like Mulan, for example. Yeah. I mean, what like one is was a different model of release. So how do you right. measure how it did? I know. And I don't think that it did well because of the you know, I think a lot of people were like, You want me to pay how much for you know, people aren't getting the fact that when you buy it for twenty nine ninety nine, you are also buying it for your family and whoever else wants to watch it. Right, because it's uh, not but, what they're used to. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, uh, I don't think anything did well last year. So, yeah. I mean, before March, like, Tenant was supposed to be like the big movie of the year yeah 
I don't know. It'll be real. It'll be really interesting to see how Raya does in comparison to Mulan, uh, and if you know people will respond to the twenty nine ninety nine uh, price point for one of the animated films, and um, yeah, right. Well, I, th- I mean, Raya has a couple things going for it. One, it's definitely a family film, like it's uh-huh. meant for families, right? And there's no real controversy are surrounding it yeah that's true um so the audience is already built into like okay it's a family thing if you took your family to go see it in the theater you'd be spending x y and z on right a b and c like yeah. popcorn this is like a like family of four that's already way over the the price right? yeah and that's sure. just tickets so Right, yeah, your kids will want popcorn and candy and soda. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a ten dollar soda, eighty dollar popcorn, right? Exactly, box of junior mints. So, yeah, um, you I like buy yourself a can of <laughs> Coke and uh, pop yeah. yourself some popcorn and yeah. get some candy from the uh, cheap section. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, people just need to rethink of how that is. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, I think if this goes on much longer, people might have to accept it. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting also to see some of the other movies that are releasing on, like, uh, streaming and the theaters, uh-huh. like some of the bigger names coming out. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's still a landscape that is new to everybody, so. Right. I don't know. I think people holding out for, like, theaters might need to start thinking that maybe it won't be that soon because we've been waiting almost a year, so. Yeah, that, the, that's another thing, I think, that, you know. Yeah. I and think we, more people are going to ask for it. I think people want their entertainment, you know. Yeah, I mean, we all want to see things in the theater. Like, Raya right. would have loved to see in the theater. Milan would have loved to see in the theater. Black Widow yeah. would have loved to see in the theater. But we also can't just put that on hold because that's the livelihoods of so many people that are involved. They want mm-hmm. to do other things. So it's like, it's almost like, you know, I understand. It's yeah. expensive. It sounds expensive for like a one purchase thing. But it's, if you look everything, in the grand scope of things it's really not and you know you want entertainment still so you have to support it right right so if you're not supporting it then don't expect it i, yeah. I say you know yeah all right well disney plus has hit 95 million subscribers it just keeps going up and up and up uh, you know, exceeding its projections, and uh, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I say now that both Star Wars and now that Marvel's kicked in, mm-hmm. and it's going to be constant stuff like we talked about. Um, it's just going to be one after the other. So yeah, well, and it's funny because one of the technicians for my dialysis, she's just now getting like. I told her about WandaVision and she's like, I'll check it out. And now she's obsessed. <laughs> like she she's like Did you tell her to watch watching her, right? all the Marvel movies. Yeah. You know. And um she's like, Oh my god, thank God I needed to, uh, to talk to somebody about all this stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, it's very fun to kind of see people get into things and I remember watching some uh, blog cast mm-hmm. where <laughs> a person said uh, Disney Plus has pretty much solidified its Friday night until the end of time, <laughs> which is so true. Like, you but know, and then if... they started putting up all the projects that are coming here and there. Yeah. I mean, once and then once all the other Star Wars shows started coming out, mm-hmm. I mean, like, like I keep saying, like I don't know what we're gonna do if there's multiple shows on at once. Like I know it's gonna be crazy. We're gonna do we're gonna do one of these every night, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically. So. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, 
can be our own TV channel. Right. So. All right. Well, we've got a few uh, Raya stories here. Uh, the first is that uh, the Disney Plus Premier Access pre-orders have begun. I've already purchased mine. Uh, and I'm just waiting for Raya to come out now. Yeah, I have to go do that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be a rush for it or whatever. I mean, it's not but... like they're going to sell out. So yeah. it just, you know, like, I don't know. So it's kind of weird that's a pre order. I guess it's just still, once it hits, you just, it's there it is. So you don't have to, like, the moment it comes out on whatever day at midnight. Right. They're probably also trying to, you know, pump up the excitement for, for it and say, you know, telling everybody, you know, be sure to pre-order your film yeah. before the internet gives out. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I am looking forward to it. I'm actually yeah. going to go to um, Downtown Disney this week. Yay! So I'm see if there's any um, Raya merch out. How exciting. I just bought a Tuk Tuk. Oh, did that, you? That uh, armadillo creature that. Yeah. Yeah. And he rolls into a ball. <laughs> I have that and I've got the pop finals coming. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what they have, have. And see if they have like an outfit for a little kid. Right. Oh, they, yeah, they do. Well, I'm sure there will be, but I want to see yeah. what it looks like and how big it is. Right. And force it upon my niece. Yeah. <laughs> Fortune upon her. Cassandra, wear this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, there was during the Super Bowl a brand new look at Raya. Uh, did you get a chance to watch that? Uh, no, I did not. They showed a little bit more uh, footage hmm. uh, of. Sifu and and uh, the Last Dragon and Raya together, uh, but for the most part, you know, it's like quick cuts, right? Quick cuts, yeah. And uh, but I thought it, I thought it was cool that they invested into showing uh, some of the footage at Super Bowl because that's not uncheap. <laughs> <laughs> Or at it least would not be I've I've cheap. led to be, believe been led to believe that it's not cheap. It is not cheap. Um, yeah, but I mean, in a normal cycle, they would definitely do it. So there would have been, there would have been uh, a Super Bowl ad regardless of when mm -hmm. we are. Like I'm pretty sure there was a Black Widow one last year. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just hope that you know people will get over that whole like it's too expensive thing and right. support it just so you know these things keep getting made in the time of covid yeah exactly um or you know don't complain about it and wait like six months until it's right free. yeah because we want we want the studios to finally release these films yeah and if i have to pay 29.99 i will yeah. So yeah. that all the other movie, Black Widow, I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely do I Black would. Widow. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that they're going to, you know, look at Raya and see how it does, mm -hmm. and um, you know, because I've heard that Bob Chapek said he's flexible around releasing it onto Disney Plus. Oh. I don't quite know what that means, but flexible sounds better than no way, Jose. I mean, I mean, like, Disney Plus has the numbers, but then, mm -hmm. you know, then you have HBO Max, which is releasing all their stuff on HBO Max and yeah. theaters. So you know, also got to kind of adapt and keep up with your competitors. Mm -hmm. You know, 
the more things are released on HBO Max, the more, the more people talk about it, the less they'll be talking about your films. So you kind of need to, like, like we've already waited a year. Yeah. For Black Widow, you know, um, how much longer are you going to? Because then there's a whole schedule, like Black Widow, Shang Chi, Eternals, right. you know, Spider Man, Doctor Strange. It, you delay any more than your release schedule gets kind of yeah exactly. turned upside down and you know with marvel usually one leads kind of into the other even if they're not super mm-hmm. connected uh you know outright yeah um, it's almost like sometimes you need a little bit of this story before you go to the next one and whatever whatever because it builds up into something if that's the route right. they're going for phase four I don't yeah. know if that's the route. Like another kind of super event. I think that's what they wanted to tone it down. But, you know, it's still, I feel like the releases are for a reason. And if you keep delaying one, the others won't start. And then it's going to be crazy. I mean, I think that there's going to be something that is going to culminate in these heroes coming together in some way. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be, but I just feel like, you know, the, the thing with comic books is they're always the same like that, where, you know, it always culminates in some bigger event. Right. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying what they said. So. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, director Carlos Lopez Estrada uh, talked about Raya and the Last Dragon. He said that it was a great learning opportunity for him, especially he he comes from live action, and so um, you know they were I guess apparently very patient and you know nurturing toward him uh, doing the Raya. Uh, he has a new animated film on the horizon. Uh, he can't say anything, otherwise uh, they'll kill him. And uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, he can't say much also about live action Robin Hood, which he's also directing. And uh, but you know, people tried to ask these questions. It was good that he didn't answer them for fear of being killed. I mean, that and that Disney money. <laughs> yeah. Because would stink to get fired. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, like he, he's got a, a history with a lot of um, uh, like video and stuff, short, short films. His biggest one, I think, so far is like blind spotting, mm-hmm. which I think they're turning into a series at some point. But I think, yeah, I think you're um, right. Um, it's one of those ones that's like it's been on my radar and I want to watch it I just you know yeah. Once, once again like I know it sounds like everything's on my list I have a long list right. <laughs> I, I know it's so long true list. Uh, I do too I have a very long list of things I, just, I need to watch I just don't have a lot of time to watch all <laughs> these things so yeah. like even like, like I'm an avid video game player but I haven't played a new game for a long time because I can't I don't have the time to like invest right now. So yeah, but blind spotting. Um, I mean, it's 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 definitely not like you can see the correlation between blind spotting and Raya. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very different kind of genre and tone and whatever. Right. Um, but you know, I'm glad that Disney is open to other creators from different. Um, avenues of the entertainment yeah spectrum i think think that's pretty cool yeah so all right well uh over a thousand disneyland cast members have been recalled uh california adventure is going to be doing a food and beverage event and uh it's going to be ticketed Mm -hmm. but that's really cool that they're able to bring back so many of the cast members to work the event. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, Knott's Berry Farm, which is down the street also, has been mm-hmm. doing that since summer. Yeah. Right? They started out small. It was also a ticketed event. Um, and they had this little portion of the park open. Obviously right. no rides, but it was still a food festival of sorts. Yeah. Um, and they kept doing it. Uh, and they kept expanding, you know, how Where much they could go. Right? So yeah. you know, it was only a, like once they opened Buena Vista Street, mm-hmm. I said, you know, they might as well do like I was hoping they would do the, the Lunar U- New Year. Um, yeah, I was hoping so. Too. Um, but and maybe they pl- maybe they planned on it, but then California went under another shut lockdown. And, maybe you know um without knowing when that would have ended right they couldn't probably plan a specific lunar new year festival yeah um because who knows it might not have happened um it just sounds more like they're going to be featuring a lot of the food that you normally would get right at the park so i'm hoping it includes both sides of the park um just, yeah i'm hoping just for the what they're offering um you know, a lot of people are like, well, open up Main Street. I'm like, yeah, but if you think like so the thing about Disneyland is that it's it was built, you know, in the 50s. Uh-huh. But it's it's narrow and compact. Yeah. Um Disney California Adventure is very spacious. Yeah. Uh, that's why all the festivals are at California Adventure. I can't remember. So yeah. much room there. Um, so I'm glad, and it sounds like they're opening up a big portion of California Adventure, right? For this, so um, I will try to be there. Definitely, yeah, I know. I definitely would love to see. Um, I, I'm I'm hoping to get down there next month, but I don't know. It's it's still kind of a right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. Nowadays, like when if I go out, I am double masking and yeah, hat. Well, my glasses is fine. Like I'm, I'm, I'm covered as much as possible. So, right. Um, but yeah, I will try to go there when they open and have hopefully some. God, what do I miss from Disneyland? <laughs> uh, <laughs> What don't well i'm mean, like food wise i mean they already offer you can get churros you can get i think corn dogs and stuff so uh-huh. i'm trying to think like what other fair most anything from jolly holiday bakery yeah that would be nice some chicken if just having the grilled <laughs> cheese and and tomato soup from there i love that's one of my favorite things yeah <sighs> yeah Lots of stuff. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to. Like, I'm still, I still got to figure out how to film the, my trips to down right. to and stuff. Yeah, I just got to be more organized. I think I'm just like haphazardly doing things, and I feel like I need to plan out a little bit. Yeah. Well, that and it helps to have another person there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see any footage. Yeah. Well, I mean, Tom great. and I. Tom and I, who you know from the WandaVision and uh, Star Wars Mandalorian mm-hmm. podcast, will be there with me. Uh, so he wants to film it. So at least we'll have two people there. So that's we- awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So. Okay. Well, uh, Disney Searchlight and Hulu has uh, gotten Summer of Soul, which is directed by Questlove. And it looks good, you know. It's yeah. it sounds like it is what it is. Yeah, Summer of Soul in the I'd imagine 70s. That. Yeah, he was um, a voice in Soul. Um, oh, he was. Uh, he was either the the I think he was a guy who um, was in the band. Uh huh. The drummer that helped get him into it into the oh, audition okay oh i didn't know that that's what that was yeah um nice 
and obviously he is also uh, from the Roots, right? Which is also the band on um, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, uh, Jennifer Rice Gesnuk, Genzuk, Henry. Jennifer Rice Genzuk Henry is writing the untitled basketball movie for Disney Plus, and Steph Curry is in talks to produce. Now, I don't know a lot about basketball, but I do know who Steph Curry is. I want to say, like, do you yeah. know who Steph Curry is? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I know the... Like, I know, I know his wife. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> I watched Real Housewives, and yeah, I knew who I knew who Steph Curry is. So right. yeah, um, yeah. Uh, she's also not Steph Curry's wife, but uh, Jennifer Rice Gens Henry um, mm-hmm. is a writer producer on the on Blackish. Mm, okay, okay, okay. And Grownish. So that's where right. that's where she comes from. Uh, I, mean, I like basketball. I like Steph Curry. <laughs> I actually do like basketball. Like I, you know, uh, I don't. I'm not like one of those people that needs to watch it. Mm. But when it's on and and there are other people there, and that's the one. You no, know, I'll, like, I'll, I'll watch it. it. Yeah, I'll watch it and understand what's going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Football is the one that I just don't understand, and nor do I want to know. About. <laughs> I, mean, I get it. Football is is more strategy, and like, there's a lot more, a lot more involved. Yeah. At the same time, it's a lot more waiting around. Right. Literally, like three hours of sports, but you're actually watching like 15 minutes. <laughs> right. Uh, but um. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming this is like a fictional basketball movie and not like the story of stuff. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, I yeah. usually like Disney sport movies. Yeah, I do too, actually. Um, so I, I'll, you know, I'll watch it. It's on Disney Plus. Right on. All right. Well, Mapuana uh, Makia is to star in Disney Plus's series, Dugi Kama, Kameloha. And um, she was in the Netflix movie, Finding Ohana. I was going to say Finding Nemo. Uh, that's another <laughs> one I want to watch. That's yeah, just... I, I haven't watched it yet, but I've heard so much good stuff about it. Yeah, I saw like the, I know what you call those when you're going through the channel and they show like a, you hover on the, yeah, like a, title, preview a little something. preview. Yeah, and I was like, I want to watch this, but it was like mm-hmm. late at night, and like I gotta watch this when I'm actually awake. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, I'll probably watch it this weekend. Did she say is she? She's yeah. gonna be playing a, a fellow resident mm-hmm. with Doogie Kamaloha. So she's going to be, I don't know if she's going to be some a kind of neighbor. a what? The wacky neighbor. So yeah, she's a wacky neighbor. Um, I'm trying to think, <laughs> I'm trying to think of Doogie Howser, like the actual Doogie Howser, the other cast, because she's an adult. So, right. I mean, if, if she's an MD, maybe she's in, in the hospital or something. Mm-hmm. The wacky hospital employee. Co-worker? Yeah. Doctor? I don't know. Could be. <laughs> Could be. Mentor. Right. Who knows? I think she's just supposed to be a friend. The friend. The wacky friend. The friend. The wacky friend. The, the wacky friend that's really a witch. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we learned Doogie. Doogie is now part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> right. Uh, I like how every wacky neighbor is a witch now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Agnes Kravitz. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. This, do we know when Dugi, I cannot even, Kamaloha, Kamaloha? I don't up? know. 
I mean, I would assume sometime this year. I mean, they, they seem to have the entire cast down and, yeah. you know, they start TV series. It's still, they're still like casting and. Yeah, that I don't know. Why don't you know these things? I know. <laughs> Get on it. I know, right? I should. Yeah. All right. Well, up and coming comedian Chris Estrada is getting his own show on Hulu, and Fred Armisen is to produce. And Chris Estrada is going to be doing a, a kind of biological, biological, biographical uh, show about his life uh, in the Latino community. And um, yeah, it sounds like uh, it should be interesting. I'm not really familiar with him as a comedian. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm not either. I know, I know Fred Armisen, and he's right. hilarious. He is so. Hopefully, uh, he'll bring some level of yeah. comedy mentoring to him. I mean, if he wants to, is there something he produces? Then that's already got you know points for that. So mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Uh, Disney has snagged nine Screen Actor Guild Award nominations. I don't know why I didn't put down what they are. <laughs> Usually, I I thought you have had some a... kind of link to it. You know. Um, oh oh well. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it'll probably take more time to look it up. Then, uh, uh, let's see who would we know? Um, Francis McDormand for Nomadland, Disney Searchlight. Don't yeah, know, you're, you're coming up with names that are Disney, yeah. Nicholas Holt for the great Hulu, Rami Yosef from Rami. Oh, yeah, uh, Kate Blanchett. Uh, from Mrs. Mrs. America. America, David Diggs, Hamilton, Ethan Hawke, the good Lord Bird on Hulu. Uh huh. Oh, outstanding action performance by stunt ensemble Mulan. Oh, good. And then, uh, outstanding action performed by stunt ensemble in a comedy art drama series. That's a weird category. Ghost of the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> stunt ensemble. Wait, what, what is it? Yeah, what is it? The ensemble what? By a stunt ensemble in a comedy art drama series. Comedy art <laughs> drama series. That is interesting. That's such a weird category. Some like, of their some of their categories are very weird. Yes. You know. <laughs> oh well. Well, good. Good on uh, Disney for uh, getting those nominations. This is probably like David Diggs is the only one from Hamilton that kind of got a, like, I mean, he won the, the Tony. All right. But like, yeah. not even like uh, uh, Renee. No, she did. She won. Uh, no, Renee won the Tony. For this. For oh. Nominated. Anyone else is nominated for Hamilton, just David Diggs. Because yeah, oh, Leslie Leslie Odom Jr. won Tony. Uh, Renee Goldsberry can't release. Yeah, won least. also for uh, Hamilton. Yeah, um, I mean even uh, um, oh my god, Lin Manuel was was also nominated, but he was nominated against Leslie Odom Jr. Right, Leslie won. Uh, but. Uh, I mean, I like David David Diggs. So, yeah. Speaking of blind spotting, he's in blind spotting. <laughs> uh, well, here's exciting news. Outlander producer Ron Moore, that that's just one of the things that he's done, has inked an overall deal with Disney. Bring back the black hole, Ron Moore. <laughs> <laughs> He's done a lot of stuff. Star Trek stuff. Battle uh, Battlestar uh, Galactica. Uh, what else did he do? He did something else, I know. 
Yeah. But he's very much in that kind of like level sci-fi. Sci-fi fantasy genre y thing. That's why my mind immediately went to Black Hole. Like if they were yeah. gonna redo that movie or remake it or something, like modernize it. Uh-huh. That would, be, that would Ron, be cool. That would be a Ron Moore jam. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. I'm all for that. Right. If I can get Vincent and old Bob back, yeah. I'm all for it. Like, you know, I feel like he would modernize it so it would look a little different. But I mean, like in Bowser Galactica, it's still you can tell they were still sidelines. Like, yeah. They were more CG, so they weren't dudes in boxy costumes. But. Right. The aesthetic was still there. So I feel he can make a cool version of Bob and Vincent. And uh, what's that red, the big red robot guy? Maximilian. Maximilian. That yeah. guy's scary. He's one of my I favorite. Know. Well, he was one of my favorite villain robots. Not there's a lot of, <laughs> not that there's a lot of villain robots, but like I remember from the black hole, the two toys I had was yeah. Maximilian and uh, Vincent. And he had, had those spinning, spinning blade things, blade arms, yeah, and uh, that he used once and terrified me as a child. Right? Yeah. I gotta watch that again. I don't see that so like I, I feel like I'm probably gonna be like, why do I like this movie? Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know that I did watch it later in life, and I'm like, hmm. bored, bored. <laughs> But I remember it was such a big part of my childhood. I mean, like, you know, we were definitely like Star Wars kids. and Right. So anything sci-fi looking with robots and stuff. Yeah. I think that's what was, like, I was more drawn because I couldn't even tell you the story, honestly. Right. I remember images. I remember going, like, cool robots and, like, weird dudes with guns, laser guns. <laughs> and, like, a big greenhouse looking place. But right. I remember, like, vividly... The two images I remember vividly are like Bob and Vincent on this bridge thing. I don't know what's going on, but I remember that and things crumbling around them. And then the uh, the bad guy ends up in Maximilian's like shell and is floating off in space. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or I'm like that's my nightmare. Going like wait, but uh, I know those are the two things I remember from that. And then er, er, Ernest Borgnine. Right. <laughs> right. And uh, <laughs> that was, was, was it the guy from Psycho? Was in it? No. Uh, he looked like the guy from Psycho. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I don't remember his name. The guy from Psycho. <laughs> yeah. And then I don't know. Or at least him, now, but... now, now I'm beginning to question myself. If only I could look it up. I know. If only you could look it up, that that would be the greatest thing ever. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> so yeah, very cool that Ron Moore is getting a deal. Maybe that there'll be some cool other sci-fi other than Marvel and uh, Star Trek, uh, Star Trek, Star Wars on Disney Plus. So I was correct. Anthony, oh, okay. Anthony Perkins. Oh man, plays I know. Doctor Alex Durant. <laughs> yeah, I, I at first I was I was thinking of the other guy, but then when I thought about it again, I was like, wait a minute. The other guy. There was another guy. He's like the. Uh, it was Robert Forrester. Yeah. And uh, Joseph Bottoms. I don't know who that is. Yvette Mimu. Mimu. Uh, he was the kind of handsome guy in their crew. I forget what his name was. Uh, these are the ones I see here. But um, man, this is yeah. 1979. I know, right? Not even an 80s movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How old are we? I know, right? Well, I I would have been ten at that time. I would have been four. Oh my gosh! Take that! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. But um, yeah, it's 
it's been a hot minute. So if Ronald Moore is going to sign a thing with Disney, I don't know if he signed like a, a series deal or movie deal. Yeah, I feel just, he, just an overall deal. I feel like he can definitely take this and run with it. Oh, yeah. I I think so. Or, you know, Tron. But, hey. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see his take on Tron. Right? Maybe, I feel like, I feel like we, like, I, if Tron is coming out as a ride in Disney World, mm-hmm. you know, I can't wait to ride that thing. Yeah. Um, you know, there's got to be some kind of, like, want for more Tron stuff. In fact, yeah. Tron is going to be in the game Fortnite, so there'll be even more because Fortnite, the game, is, like, phenomenal. Wow. Not to say that it's great. I'm not a big player of that game, but, I mean, it's popular, and, like, everyone plays it. Like, everyone I know and their cat plays that game. Yeah. So, if they're going to feature Tron characters, people are going to be like, mm-hmm. what is this? Right. And then, boom. Ronald Moore's Tron. Yeah. <laughs> slash Black Hole. <laughs> there you go. Let's mash it together. <laughs> All right. Well, the last story of tonight is uh, Shazam star Asher Angel is joining season two of High School the Musical the Musical the series. <laughs> and he's the guy yeah, who Asher Angel was the guy who played Billy Batson, right? Billy Batson, right? Yeah. Um, so that'll be interesting. I didn't I didn't know he could sing, but apparently he can. Uh yeah. I don't I mean I don't watch <laughs> High School the Musical the Musical the series. Like I've never um, seen High School Musical. No, have, have I, no, I don't believe this. I've never seen your seen. sister nope. and Eileen. No, by the time that came out, they couldn't trap me into a room and watch it. So wow. Never seen that. Never seen wait, is there a musical? <laughs> wait, high school of the high so, school? Musical? There's high school musical, but is there a high school musical of the musical? To also facilitate that there's a high school the music high school musical the musical the series well a lot of high schools do a musical version uh, i mean like a high school musical as a musical right um there's but no, like, there's no official. like official okay that's what yeah I'm I mean, yeah um, nothing on broadway or anything like, well, that. like you watch this show. So the series is a, was like the first season was about high school production of High School Musical the Musical, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is this the same bunch of characters or are they going to go through another high school? Because I'm imagining at the end of series, they would have put on the musical. Well, I think, yeah, they did put on the musical. Uh, I think that they're going to go with the same cast like olivia rodrigo who plays uh, i forget her name but she's a main girl i mean like her career is really taking off mm-hmm. and i think so is the guys so um i can't imagine that they would want to get rid of them and um yeah i just don't i mean they can't be doing high school the musical again unless That's they do saying. high school the musical too Oh, that's right. There are more high school musicals. Right. I know. It will be interesting <laughs> to see if they do uh, the number two and then number three. <laughs> so that's at least you know if they do that, then there'll at least probably be a third season. Right. And then what do you do? <laughs> yeah. If they, yeah. Then, then they're older and they're like, we can't keep playing high school kids. Like we're not. Right. The, we're not the Breakfast Club. Yeah. We're not to be thirty-year-old high schoolers anymore. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I wonder um, wonder if they're filming Shazam. I know it's not a Disney thing, but like. I don't know. I know there was like a big announcement about it at uh, the Disney fandom, which, come on, Marvel. (laughs) Get get on it. We're not going to have WonderCon this year. Right. And you guys have a lot of stuff coming out. So, yeah. You know. I would say they had a stronger WonderCon presence, but they always saved it for Comic Con and then Disney Disney yeah. or D twenty three. 
D23 and Comic-Con. So I get it, but like in lieu of having Comic-Con and D23. Right. Why not <laughs> throw us some bones? Or they were a little more optimistic about like, eh, we'll just wait till next year. I don't know. Maybe. Even if it did. I'm not Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. On my Facebook, I got the uh, like one of my memories was like, I got my tickets to WonderCon. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I remember those when that was like a normal part of my year, right? Like, oh, this it would be the start of con, of con season, it'd be like, uh, WonderCon, Comic Con. Usually, there's some kind of D23 or Star Wars one, yeah, every other year for D23. Right? So, nope, Thanks. yeah. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> D23 won't be out until next year. Well, at least so. Celebration is also postponed to 2022. So Right. I mean, it's good that they're doing that because yeah. it would but, be irresponsible for them to but I try think to. Because they know, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be a Comic-Con. Even if they said, like, everyone got vaccinated, I still think it's too soon. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm like, I'm hoping that uh, Marvel and Disney uh, yeah. do something in lieu of not having a convention to right. show stuff at. Yeah. That's, that's not the earnings call. Yeah. So. Uh, which I'm excited. I got invited to my first... I, I've been a stockholder for a while, but I get to be on the first uh, annual meeting to call for Disney. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Let us so, know what happens. I will. I definitely will. All right. Well, we have come to the end of our show. Uh, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post. This really does help us out. Um, leave a comment below and let us know what was your favorite story of the day? Uh, did you have any opinions on them or? something that you'd like to express about any of our new stories, let us know. Uh, you can always uh, share our posts with your family and friends. And you can always reach us uh, at podcast at castlescapedandclothes.com. Uh, leave us your feedback, good or bad. We'd love to hear from you. And you can reach me personally on Twitter at Lojav. And on Instagram at Lauren Javier. How about you, Rich? I am on Twitter and Instagram at R2 Romasanta. All right. Well, the opinions expressed on today's podcast are only our own and do not represent the uh, Walt Disney Company, its subsidiaries, or assets. Thanks so much for joining us, and we will see you later. Bye, guys. Yep. See you real soon.